Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. This is 10 exam prep questions with full audio explanations. You can head over to electricalexamcoach.com to learn all about these concepts step by step. Before we get started, if you'll hit that subscribe button, it'll help us share and impact more people. Now let's talk about the best way to use this resource. So I'm going to read the questions one at a time. Right after I'm done reading them, pause the video and try to answer it yourself. And then unpause the video and you can watch a full detailed explanation. Let's get to it. What is the total calculated load for eight 5,000 watt dryers using the standard method? The correct answer is 24,000. When doing standard method calculations, we're required to use 5,000 VAs as a minimum per dryer or the nameplate, whichever is larger. Then we're going to multiply that individual wattage by the number of dryers that we have. Then we're going to head over to table 220.54, find our demand factor, and multiply. When we get to our table, we read the black bold heading to make sure that we're in the right table. Dwelling unit dryers, I feel good about it. Then we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our number of dryers, which is 8. Then we're going to come across and we're going to tee off with our demand factor in percentage. Make sure that you use a straight edge on this table so you don't get crossed. Use a piece of paper or a pencil. Then when we get there, we're going to perform our math. We take our 5,000 per dryer. We multiply it by our number of dryers. Then we take that total demand and we will multiply it by the demand factor. And that's going to be a new reduced load of 24,000 watts. I am the Electrical Code Coach and you can head to electricalexamcoach.com to learn about more topics like these. What is the demand factor for one 9.5 kW range? The correct answer is 8 kW. And to find this, we're going to head to table 220.55. The first question we always ask ourselves is what column does our range fall in? Ours is a 9.5 kW range, so it falls into column C. So then we start all over. We start on the left-hand side of the table and find our number of ranges which is one, we come over and we tee off with the column C value for one range, and we find that it's 8 kW. We have to remember here that column C is not a demand factor, but rather a replacement value. So our 9.5 kW range only counts for 8 kW on our load calculation. Great job. What is the ampacity of a 250 kc mil copper conductor in the 75 degree C column? The correct answer is 255 amps. When we head to our primary ampacity table, we're going to be on the left hand side of the table because it's copper. Then we start on the far left hand side of the table and we come down and find 250 kc mil. Then we're going to cross over to the 75 degree C column because that's what the question is asking for. When we do all of this, we find that 250 kc mil copper is good for 255 amps in the 75 degree C column. Let's get to it. What is the total cubic inch count you would count for 18 number 12 conductors when calculating box fill? The correct answer is 40.5. And to find this answer, we're going to head to 314.16b. We're going to start on the left-hand side and find our size conductor. Then we're going to come all the way over to the inches squared column, or inches cubed, excuse me, and we are going to select our individual conductor. Each 12-gauge conductor is 2.25. We take our 18 conductors, multiply the 2.25 cubic inches, and we end up with 40.5 cubic inches. You can head to electricalexamcoach.com to learn about this subject and many more. Let's get to it. What is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a 4 to 1 turn ratio and a primary voltage of 480? The correct answer is 120. This turns ratio is stating that for every 4 volts on the primary side, there is 1 volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every four coils of wire on the primary side, there is one coil of wire on the secondary side. To find out the secondary output, you would divide the primary voltage by four to find out what one unit of it is. We would take 480 divided by four, and that equals 120. You can double check your work by dividing it back. 
480 divided by 120 equals 4. This is a 120 240 step down transformer. You can visit electricalexamcoach.com to learn all about this and many more subjects. Let's get to it. What is the allowable ampacity of a number 8 THWN-2 copper conductor in an area with an ambient temperature of 87 degrees Fahrenheit and a conduit with 12 current carrying conductors? The correct answer is 26 amps. Now let's break it down. First we're going to start at our primary ampacity table. We're going to be on the copper side of the table and we're going to check and see if our insulation type is listed in the 90 degree C column. It is. So we're going to go down and choose our starting ampacity, which is 55 amps. Now we're going to head to our bundling adjustment table and we're going to find the adjustment factor for 12 current carrying conductors. When we find that, we're going to head over to our temperature correction factor table and find the correction factor for an ambient temperature of 86 degrees or 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Then when we get both of those factors, we start with our original ampacity. We do multiply it by 0 0.50, which was our bundling adjustment, and we multiply it by 0 0.96, which is our correction factor, and that gives us a new allowable ampacity of 26.4 amps. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and you can head over to electricalexamcoach.com to learn about this topic and many more. Let's get to it. How many receptacles are required in a patient bed Category 1 location? The correct answer is 14. Believe it or not, there's 14 required receptacles to be on this Category 1 location. To find it, we're going to use our keyword and index process. What are we talking about here? We're talking about receptacles, aren't we? Now we're going to go to R in the index, and then we're going to go back to our question and look for more keywords. We're talking about receptacles, but we're talking about specifically patient bed areas. So we might look at patient, bed, location, but let's be as descriptive as possible at first and then dial back. Let's look for patient bed locations. When we get there, sure enough, we find a patient bed locations, and it has two different code references for us. 517.18b and 517.19b. So when we flip there, we're going to quickly use our black bold headings to go to the first code reference. And we find out that that is a category two. So we look at the next black bold heading. Sure enough, it's a category one. So we're going to slow down and take our time. When we read the paragraph, we find that it's required to be 14 receptacles. Let's get to it. What is the maximum cross-sectional area you can fill a pipe if you only have one conductor? The correct answer is 53%. We're going to find this in the Chapter 9, Table 4 tables. Anytime we get to it, we're always going to make sure that we check the type of pipe. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's the same across all these tables. On the left-hand side of this table is our size conduit. If we have more than two wires, if we have a nipple at 60% or any other 60% value, and then if you're only doing one wire, and where this would be practical is like if you're doing a grounding electrode conductor or something like that, but you're only allowed to fill that pipe 53%. To give you the visual, that will let's imagine that this is a piece of pipe and you're looking directly at it. You're allowed to fill that pipe up 53% of that pipe. I am the Electrical Code Coach. You can head to electricalexamcoach.com to learn all about pipe fill. Let's get to it. What is the voltage drop of a 200 amp circuit using 4 watt copper conductors that is 225 feet long on a 120 240 volt system? And the correct answer is A, 5.5. For this one, we're going to use our Ohm's Law formula, 2 kid over C mills. We're going to have 2 as our constant. Our K factor is going to be 12.9 this time because it's copper. And then we're going to have our current and our distance divided by the C mills. In order to get that information, we're going to head over to Chapter 9, Table 8. We're going to start on the left-hand side until we find our conductor. Then we're going to crumb over and we're going to get our C mills. After we bear out all our math, and this is what I love about formulas. Just plug in what you know and then spit out the answer. 2 multiplied by 12.9 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 225 divided by the circular mills of a 4 watt copper conductor is going to equal 
5.48676, da 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 and it continues on. We're going to round up to 5.5 and call it a day. Let's get to it. What is the minimum size copper equipment grounding conductor required for a 200 amp feeder supplying a detached garage located 50 feet from the main service panel? The correct answer is six gauge wire. Thankfully, it doesn't matter if it's 50 or 100 feet from the panel, but the test makers love to put things like this in the question to throw you off. It requires an equipment grounding conductor. That equipment grounding conductor must be supplied by 250.122. We're going to start on the left-hand side, and we're going to select our overcurrent protective device in amps, which in this case is 200. Then we're going to cross over, being sure to select from the copper side, because that's what the question asked for. And we're going to select a number six. Let's get to it. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I've dedicated my life to help you become everything that you can be in life and in the electrical industry. If there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. My bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Those will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.